G'day, this is Mr. Thompson. I'm going to show you how to build a spreadsheet, um, a blank table for all of your data for your motion of a trolley down a ramp experiment, which you're about to do. So uh, I want to build a table or a spreadsheet that looks exactly like this. So I can record my controlled variables here and I can, tr and I can record all my trials um, one, two, three, four, five, my five trials there. Um, there's a column for averages. There's a column for the uncertainty of the mean. We haven't talked about that yet, but we will. And then we're going to do some columns here to calculate the average and the instantaneous velocities um, based on the data that we get here. So this is where we're going to there and there is where we're going to record our data. All right. So how do we create this um, from scratch? OK, well, you're going to start with a, uh, a brand new spreadsheet, uh, just like that. And the first thing I like to do is I like to make my A column, just make it a small A column, and that sort of serves as a margin. Uh, I don't like to have my table hard up against the side here. I don't know, it's just a thing I do. Some people don't worry about that. OK, first thing I'm going to do is put in my heading. Motion uh, of a trolley down a ramp motion of a trolley down a ramp and hit enter now I'm going to come back up here and click on that cell that's got the text in it and I'm going to make it bold and I'm going to increase it click 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 I don't know 16 yeah that looks about right okay now I want to put my controlled variables I want to put my controlled variables um, here so I'm going to put a little heading controlled controlled variables like that hit enter again come up to this cell that's got the text in it and I'm going to bold it and I'll leave it that size because it's only just a subheading. All right, now I want my controlled variables. I'm going to put my, con I want to actually put my controlled variables there and have labels there. Okay, so let's start with, so I'm going to click on cell D4, cell D4, uh, and my controlled variables are the mass um, of the trolley, mass of the trolley in brackets, that's going to be in kilograms. Um, okay, the ramp height is going to be in meters. The ramp length is also going to be in meters. So they're my controlled variables. Now, here's my first problem. I said I wanted to put those controlled variables. I wanted to put the numbers in there, but my text has um, sort of spilled over onto the spaces, onto the cells that I want the numbers. So what I want to do, I'm going to select those cells there. So D4 to 6, select those cells there that have got the text in it. And I'm going to click on this um, button here, which uh, so that's under the Home tab. Click on this button here, and that's going to align right those that text. So now you can see that the, the right-hand side of the text is aligned with the right-hand side of the cell. So the, um, the overflow of the text now spills out to the left, not the right, which is where I want it. So that's good. All right. This is where I'm going to put my numbers, uh, the mass of the trolley and the, ramp, the height of the ramp and the length of the ramp. Um, so I'm just going to make a little table there. Let's see, I'm just going to put some borders on the table. And um, so there's some borders there now. And I also like to put a thick outside border around every table that I make. Um, that's just a personal preference thing. Um, that's what I do. All right, let's look at the um, table that we want to build. So the table that we want to build has got two rows that are going to be um, the two rows are going to be the uh, headings. See, I've got all of those headings there. They're all times. So it's our first, second, third, fourth, and fifth trials. That's where we're going to put our uh, our trials. Then we've got another heading for the average, which is still a time. So it's going to go under the time column. And this here, uh, U O M, that's the uncertainty of the mean. We haven't talked about that yet, but we will. So I'm going to leave a column there for the uncertainty of the mean. Um, we're also going to create a column for velocity, the average and the instantaneous velocity. And uh, we'll talk about how to calculate those later. All right. So the important thing I need to know is um, I need two rows to be my headings. So, OK, so over here, let's see these two rows here. These two rows here need to be my heading. So I'm going to click on my first one there. So that's B8. And that was distance in meters. 
Okay, uh, and then I want time. And I had seven columns for my time. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've typed time in the first one and I've selected seven columns. Now I'm going to click on this merge and center button here. And that makes that top cell, that's just now one cell. And I can put underneath, I can put my trial one, trial one, trial two, uh, trial three, trial four, trial five, uh, my average, average, and my uncertainty of the mean. So capital U, little o, capital M. Okay. Now over here we wanted velocity. Velocity. Oh, if I can spell it correctly. Velocity. And the velocity is in meters per second. Oh, there's a problem. I forgot to, on time, I forgot to put, um, I forgot to put the seconds. So let me just put, I put, forgot to put my units. There's my units in seconds. Okay, my velocity in meters per second, and I want an instantaneous velocity. So I'm just going to call that inst, because instantaneous is really long and hard to spell, and that's easier to do that. Uh, oh, actually, no, I want my average first. So I'm going to put average, average, my average velocity. Then here I'm going to put my instantaneous velocity. Average and instantaneous. All right, so there's my headings done. Um, let's tidy this up a little bit. Those two cells there, they need to be one cell. So I'm just going to merge and center those like that. And the text doesn't fit, so I'm just going to click on wrap text there. Okay, so now distance in meters, that text is wrapped and that fits nicely. Okay, let's, um, uh, let's select all of those headings there and let's, oh, I don't know, again, let's make all borders. So I've got borders there. And I'm also around my headings. I'm also going to put a thick outside border like that. Okay, so there's my headings. Now, um, let's see, how many rows do I need? I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows of data. So let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and, and, and so seven rows of data across like that. Let's just check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's correct. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to put in all borders uh, like that, and I'm going to put a thick outside border there. All right. Now, uh, let's um, the distances. What distances do I want? Well, my first distance is going to be zero. We'll talk about in class why we're doing a distance of zero. Um, my next distance is going to be 10 centimeters, which is 0.1 meters. My next one's going to be 20 centimeters, which is 0.2 meters. And then I'm going to go 40 centimeters, 0.4, then 60 centimeters, then 80 centimeters, which is 0.8, then 1 meter, which is 1.0. Now, um, my decimal places aren't very tidy there, are they? It'd be better if I had one decimal place um for all of my data so if i select all of those cells there and if i just come over and play with these two buttons here to increase or decrease the number of decimal places and if i just play with those until i get what i'm after and that's what i'm after i want them all to have one decimal place like that okay we're nearly there um let's do a little bit of color coding just because it makes it easier to see actually before i even do any color coding there are all my distances there so I'm going to select all of those distances. and I'm going to put a thick black box around all my distances. I'm going to select all of my times like that. And I'm going to put a thick black box around them. And I'm going to select all my velocities and put a thick black box around them. So just so that I've got some nice grid lines. Okay, um, now you can see I format, I put some headings there. I find that that just makes it easier to read. So let's do that. You can choose whatever colors you want. Um, just choose, don't choose outrageous bright dark colors. Um, you don't want the colors to take away. You don't want them, them to be the focus of the table. Um, you, want, you want subtle colors that will just make the table easier to read. So you might choose one like that. Yeah, all my times there, I'll choose a different color. Um, so th typically these top colors on the top of the columns, they're good colors to use. So let's let's do something different. I don't know, let's put green there. I'll put, I don't know, something 
uh, is your chance to be individual. <laughs> I've already used that one, haven't I? There we go. Yeah, I'll use that one. Okay, so we've got distance, time, and velocity there. All right, um, that's pretty much it. Um, so that data, that table now is ready to record your data. I'll make another video which will show how to do a lot of these calculations uh, and how to create your graphs. But that's all you need now. You're ready to do your experiment.